Hello everyone and welcome back to For the Minions episode 25, the weekly uh, show where we talk about some of the spiritual successors of the Paragon. This week we have our news and updates as always, uh, a little tweak to the poll results, we're going to talk about, you know, if this was your first MOBA Paragon. And then we got Tech Time with Ruba, the top for discussion, we're going to be talking about mirror matches and how much fun they are. And then after that, we're going to talk a little bit about sustainability of each game. I'm your host, the one and only Mangoose. Joining me, as always, is Mandy Mal. How you doing, Mandy? I'm doing great, as always. And as always, we have another fantastic guest host for you guys. This time we have Karina Nebula. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started in Paragon, favorite hero, all that good stuff. Yeah, hey guys. Uh, Karina Nebula, that's my gamer tag. Uh, I'm a game design student in, at SCAD. It's an art school in Savannah, uh, Georgia. And I started playing Paragon um, pretty, I mean, right at the beginning, really, and uh, kept playing, kind of petered off a little bit. But I'd say I played mostly Monolith, but, you know, I, I experienced a lot of different um, eras. So, uh, Savannah's a great town. I don't, if you guys out there have ever been, was it, was it River Street where all the bars are? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the spot. Yeah, I had a great time when I went to Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it a lot. Uh, who's your Who's your favorite hero? Definitely, my favorite hero is Gideon, for sure. He he was the top of our uh, poll whenever we uh, did the poll of whose favorite hero everyone was. <laughs> I think he's pretty original, like one of the most original characters in Paragon, really. Yeah, you think so? I With think the, so. Uh, I mean, the ranged rock that just drops straight down instead of. Yeah. Yeah, and then the the portal, the portal definitely unique with especially with everybody else being able to take that portal. Mm -hmm. You don't yeah. see that a lot. That's mm -hmm. for sure. So let's move on to news and updates. This week we're going to be talking about Meta Buff and uh they released this they actually released this last week. You may have seen a Britix video about it. Uh it's a video about Severog um using his abilities, not about Severog. It was just a video of Severog <laughs> using his abilities. There was no storyline to it. They didn't <laughs> <laughs> But um it, you know, I would, like Britic said, I would kind of prefer to see him on the map, like, you know, mm -hmm. maybe two people going against each other, yeah. but it did show that they are still working on the game. Um, I think that was kind of, a, a lot of people were wanting something from them, a little bit of something to let, let us know that they're, that they're still going because they went very quiet after they delayed the alpha. So with they actually, I mean, at least they gave us a little tidbit, a little something to, to, to snack on while we wait for more news from those guys. So uh, what'd you guys think of the Sebrog video? Mandy, you wanna go first? Um, sure. It was definitely like you said, Goose. It was nice to have a little a little snack uh, in between our main courses here while we wait for bigger stuff like a like an alpha or um, you know, a big gameplay you know, trailer or something like that. So it was nice. It was nice to see they're working, obviously, which you you know they're working, but it's nice to to see a little a little snippet of that. So it was cool. It was good to see. Yeah, I like seeing it too. I mean, any news is good news. And yeah. um, seeing his uh, actual weapon, his hammer, or yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Not like the scythe, but yeah. <laughs> he was whacking people with it and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. And then, uh, uh, Karina Nebula, you wanted to discuss the HUD and the uh, the heat map. That is kind of an interesting thing that I think was a little overlooked from their proof of concept. That was their final video of the proof of concept. And you guys, I don't think you can actually check out check that out anymore. I think they took it down. But um, they may have left that one up. I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, what 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 did you, what did uh what you have to say about that? Yeah, like when I saw it, I was like, wow, this is really cool. Like it's, you know, for me, I want something better than Paragon from these games. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not it's not just sort of like a copy or trying to you know, make it similar. It's like new and they're trying to make it better. So I think that's like really self-evident that core will be better. Yeah, if you guys don't know what we're talking about with the heat map, they uh, they actually mapped out where your mouse goes normally while playing a game like a, like Paragon or any kind of third person sort of game. And, it, you know, the, and they put stuff like your UI elements matched up where your mouse would normally go for certain things. So um, they definitely put a lot of thought into behind their UI and behind a lot of the, the things that they do. And that's just kind of a cool thing to see from them. 
And um, the, uh, their, their HUD is, of course, going to be completely customizable. So if you want stuff in a different area, if, you're, if the heat map doesn't match, match your, uh, your fire, <laughs> you, can, uh, mm -hmm. you can adjust it to make it the way you want to. Yeah, and another thing, like, I really liked the alt tokens, and, you know, it is it is like the first time we've seen the HUD, so it's not final, and like you're saying, it's customizable, so I think those are all really good things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love the idea of a customizable HUD. Um, I think that is definitely a way to please the masses, because that's, <laughs> you know, one thing that nobody can complain about, because you can, <laughs> they can't complain about something they can completely customize, yeah. so I like it. And then, uh, again, Karina had another great idea. Uh, let's, let's discuss some good comps based on the, um, the, the, the 15 heroes that are, that are currently in the alpha roster. And, um, it, it that, that's a cool thing to do. Like what, what, what kind of comp would you, would be your comp? Uh, let me know down in the comments, what comp you think would work best with the 15 heroes that made above has, um, Karina, I'm sure you've got something something worked up what do you what do you think well for my first pick if we're doing it draft style um <laughs> i would pick gideon me i would be playing <laughs> um and then for my support i'd say muriel um just because i really like her ult where she can teleport or mm -hmm. you know fly and then um for the adc i went with twin blast just because i think he's a solid adc you know you can't really go wrong either, or if you know what you're doing at least but um for jungle i would pick kalari and that's partially because of my brother he's also a paragon player or he used to be but uh he loved kalari so i picked her and um finally for top lane i picked graystone because of his ult because if you don't know how to deal with graystone <laughs> yeah you're not gonna win so yeah that's a very good point mm. mandy who would you pick um, I really liked that was a really good one there, uh, Karina. Um, I think I would have to go Sparrow as my ADC. And as much as I loved FaZe, I would probably take Muriel as my uh as my support as well, because if someone knew if you had a good Muriel, you had a good Muriel. So I that was I would I would take her. Um, let's see. Jungler, I think I would go um uh, oh my gosh, I just lost his name. Um, you lost it or can't remember it? I can't remember his name. Uh, it's My husband used to play him all the time in the jungle. He was like, he had the mask and the... Chimera? Chimera, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> I totally lost his name. So uh, that always worked well when my husband and I played together and he was Chimera. So I would, yeah. that kind of just is like my pick. I want... <laughs> my husband to be my jungler. <laughs> um, and then I also like uh, Gideon, but I, and then I also like um, a uh, Greystone as offlane. So yeah. that was a good one, good pick. I think it kind of depends on how you want to play the game. Like you've got early game comps, you got late game comps. I prefer late game comps. So I think what I would go with, I would go with Big Daddy Bash for my support and uh, Sparrow as my carry. Because she's uh you know she's not so good early game, but she's yeah. a monster late game, especially combined with Narbash keeping people slowed down inside the uh, inner fire. I think it was called was her ultimate. And then I would also go Gideon with mid lane, but for the jungler, I would pick Severog because Severog again you get into the late game and he is an absolute monster. And then um, off lane, I do think out of all the options available to us, I do think Greystone is the best off laner. Um, just generically i mean people can of course play other off you know it, it depends on player skill but i think just generically graystone is probably the best offlane choice for them so um and also mandy phase is off the table she's uh she got replaced by decker so which that's kind of a you when didn't know did that? that happened no we, we covered that on the show oh yeah okay yeah i did know yeah, that um i knew that phase and um now I'm now I'm can't remember names. Mandy, you cursed me. You cursed me with it. <laughs> it was uh Faze and Quang got replaced by Fing Mao right. and Decker. And Decker. I remember now. That, that, I, I, could, I, I didn't know if I wanted Big Daddy Bash or Decker, but I think I, I would prefer Big Daddy Bash for my support. Again, it's kind of like what you were saying with Muriel. If somebody played Muriel, they were a good Muriel. Mm -hmm. When people played yeah. Narbash, it was because they were a good Narbash. So. Right. 
You guys were all including people like you knew and stuff. I didn't do that. I kind of, I kind of feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because I don't have friends. So moving I'll on to... Yeah. I'll be your friend. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Not Mandy, though. No, don't be here. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to Omeda Studios and... uh. They've been putting a lot of work in. They've got uh, they've got Murdoch's kit pretty much done, and they've moved on to Gadget and trying to trying to perfect her stuff. Um, one of the kind of the interesting things with Murdoch is they 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 changed his kit his kit around a bit. They um <laughs> they baked his knockback into Buckshot, kind of like it was in um on Monolith, and they so they took his shield away and replaced it with a passive ability, which is shots fired. If you guys remember, um, shots fired. You know every couple shots murdoch fired off you know one would be like a uh, super long range with more penetration um shot so but the way they're indicating that is the uh they call it the wee woos whenever whenever your shots fired is off <laughs> cooldown and your next shot will be um that you know long range projectile uh his uh his back lights up with you know the r blue and red flashing lights which i think is a cool change and it also sort of introduces a new thing for them. They didn't have any passive abilities before in the uh, when when they first released the alpha. And so that just shows that they they do have the ability to put in passives, which is uh, I think a very different thing than doing active abilities. So I don't know. What do you guys think? You think um, shots fired? You 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 prefer the shield with the buckshot, or do you prefer the uh, the the old passive? Um, I did see a little bit of Smokey's stream and watch, you know, watching him. Um, I'm okay with the change as long as it's like easily, like it's easily explained or it's, you know, you can tell that this it's changed. It's not mm -hmm. the same. As long as everybody knows, it's cool. Um, I didn't play a whole lot with him, so I, my opinion means diddly squat, but I kind of, mm -hmm. I kind of liked the shield, um, when the little bit that I did get to mess around with him, so, but I'm sure the change will be, you know. Well, I mean, the, 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 the knockback from the shield is baked into Buckshot now. I think the reasoning behind <laughs> it was there were, um, they said their, their, their balance team, which is, uh, let, you know, headed up by RGS Ace and I think, uh, Ruba and, um, some of their MOBA consultants had some say in this as well. I think it was Severog. But anyway, um, what they were saying is Murak seemed to be more focused around a like close range combat with all the abilities that he had, and they wanted him to be more long range. So that's why they gave him shots fired as opposed to the uh, to the shield. But they still baked the knockback into his to, to give him an escape. Uh, baked the knockback into buckshot. Makes sense. Yeah. Did, once they explained it, it made a lot more sense to me. When I first saw it, I was like, I hate passives, but. Mm. It did make sense after they had kind of covered it a little bit. And then moving on to Ethereal, uh, not a lot of news from them. They're just, uh, they're taking their old website down and putting a new one up. They, talking to Owen, he does not like that website that they currently have at all. I think it's a great website. It looks beautiful. Uh -huh. Everything functions well. Everything seems to be where it should be. I don't know what's wrong with the old one, but if they're going to put up an even better one, then cool, I guess. So... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, I can only imagine if, you know, something is going to be better. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to be better than what they have now. I mean, they. I think definitely out of all the companies, Ethereal definitely has the best website right now. But, you know, website doesn't mean anything. I would rather have a functional game than a website. But True. You know, uh, <laughs> really looking forward to Ethereal. And um, I'm hoping they get some new lore up on their website. I love Ethereal's lore. <laughs> and then uh i think that's all about you you guys have anything you want to say about ethereum yeah i do um before um getting on this show i didn't really know much about ethereal and i was more excited for pred and um, core so I, I did a little bit more research and the thing that i'm i'm like most excited about that game is the flying class because mm -hmm. it wasn't that like that's like brand new so and you know the the lanes on the top of the map i think that is pretty interesting so I'm definitely going to give it a try now that I looked it up. So, yeah. yeah, that's the thing with Ethereal. Most people that, um, a lot of people seem to mistake it as either core or her predecessor mm -hmm. on the yeah. surface. But once they realize it's a completely different game with all kinds of different stuff, uh, they seem to be pretty attracted to it. Um, and I, for good reason, like I always say, that's the one I'm looking forward to the most is Ethereal. So can't wait for that to come out. And yeah, the Sky Slayers do look cool. Paragon, Epic actually did have flying heroes planned for Paragon, like down the road. 
but they just you know never came never came into fruition because they canceled that shit so that yeah. sucks i guess muriel sort of counts but yeah, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't direct where she flew really yeah. like this would be, i think epic actually had like a full like you could control their flight path another one would heroes. be gideon when he did that little yeah yeah <laughs> totally, totally counts totally counts. So how, how did that ultimate go again how did... <laughs> i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> so. Let's, uh, we didn't really have anything for Phoenix Rising this week, so let's move on to, uh, uh, Karina, you want to talk about merch for each company? Um, I think that's a great idea. I think, uh, we were, we were discussing this before we started up the show. Um, as far as making money before you have the product out, and they do need to make some money, I think merch is probably the best way to go because at least you get something in return for your money spent, if you know what I mean. So, have you guys bought any of the merch from core i think core is the only one that has merch out right now yeah i i bought um one of the colorful um core sweatshirts i think it's blue yeah it, it hasn't made it to my house yet but i did buy one. Oh, oh right on yeah those really those cool. look really cool yeah i think there's leggings too that are like similar look but yeah. i'll leave those to other people <laughs> <laughs> like me yep yep yeah, yeah like, like for goose. <laughs> yep. No, i did I order a tried... hat Oh, you did finally mm, order one? I finally ordered a hat, yeah. Cool. Aw, cool. yeah. I want a hat. I want legging. I want it all. That's the problem, though, is I want all of it, so I have to, <laughs> yeah. I, I have to decide which I want. I'm still, to, I'm still a little unsure about that jacket, though. That jacket looks way mm. too X-Men to me. Yeah. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> X-Men are out. It's, a, it's all about Avengers now. Come on. No, no way. Give it the program. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have any uh, Paragon merch? I do not know. I no. wish I did. I do too. Yeah, yeah I still... they didn't promote their fucking mm -hmm. game. They <laughs> like, didn't. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've seen that. Uh, who is it? Is it Nabori has a had a hat? I really would have loved a hat. But yeah. also, I would just love to have a physical copy of the game. I know that would do yeah. absolutely nothing, but I just want a physical copy of the game. And I don't. I haven't looked online. Like sometimes I'll browse through. Um, if I'm at a game store, I'll say like, what are the chances that somebody, yeah. you know, like <laughs> has one, but I'm sure they're not going to sell a dead game. So, yeah, I was talking to Ruba about those hats because Ru they gave Ruba a hat while he w visited the uh, Epic headquarters. Yeah, I think that's how Nabori got his. And he was saying that it's like the most <laughs> uncomfortable hat ever. It's like they just got a hat from a store and then like stapled a big metal thing to the front of it. Oh, he no. said it like digs into your forehead. So. Oh no! I would love to have one. I just wouldn't wear it. I guess. Yeah, I probably would. <laughs> Throw wear it on a mannequin head. There you go. <laughs> well, that's good to know. That makes me feel a little less bad about not having I know, one. Right? <laughs> well, that does bring up such a good point, though. They did not like when Fortnite came out. Um, DKT was talking about this on his on his channel. When Fortnite came out. There was advertising fucking everywhere. You couldn't watch a YouTube video without a Fortnite ad running in front of it. Mm -hmm. However, there was nothing for Paragon. Like, you had to, like, happen to fall into Paragon. Like, you just... What what did they do? They did nothing. They mm -hmm. There was no commercials. There was no ads. There was no YouTube ads. It just... They didn't promote it at all. They wondered, like, why it didn't succeed. Well, you didn't tell anybody about the game. Yeah, and it's crazy to think. I mean, look how passionate the community is. I know, exactly. It's yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. I guess they just didn't know what they had. Until it's gone. Until it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on here before I embarrass myself some more to the poll results. Uh, the poll results, the poll that I ran, it was uh, last week that I ran this, was, uh, was Paragon your first MOBA? I was kind of curious about this. 75% of you said yes, 25% said no. I thought that the number would be high. I didn't know it was going to be that high. And it, I think that actually, that kind of ties in with the fact that you know, 70% 70, 70 of Paragon's player base was on the PS4. And there's not a lot of MOBAs on the PS4. It's really only Smite. So I think, uh, I mean, there's more now, but I think that probably has a lot to do with it being a lot of people's first MOBA. And, um, Mandy, it was your first MOBA. Karina, it was not yours, though, right? No. Uh, what was your your first MOBA? I think it was League of Legends, I'm pretty sure. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. 
Yep, it was my first, but just because it wasn't your guys' first, um, you guys are actually the minority. I'm the majority here. So. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Mandy, don't sass me. <laughs> so. He's been saying that to me all day. <laughs> I think maybe that number is so high because of the amount of Paragon players that are from the PlayStation. And like, mm -hmm. there really aren't many MOBAs on the PlayStation. So maybe that's, maybe yep. that's related, yeah. So for this week's tech time, uh, it was actually pretty lengthy and uh, very tech heavy. So what I did was I cut it down to a little under 10 minutes. Um, if you're into that sort of thing, then it's, you know, a lengthy tech time is awesome. But if you're not, people's eyes sort of glaze over and they drop out of the, out of, out of watching it. So we're going to keep it down to a, a little under 10 minutes and we're, we're going to keep going with learning how to implement the assets into the Unreal Engine. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around for tech time. Hey guys, welcome back to Tech Time. Last week we covered how to get Yin loaded up into the Unreal Engine. We covered some some y'all things, some camera angles, making sure she's not just running straight at the camera. And we got her in the Unreal Engine and move around, but there's, you know, still a little funky things with her animation. So I got Ruba back and he's going to show me how to fix that stuff in this week's Tech Time. So Ruba, take it away, my dude. Oh, welcome back, Mongus. Um... I am very excited. We're gonna get we're gonna get some better animations done. So um, last week we covered the player character, which is one of the blueprints covered um, or included in the the Unreal asset on the Unreal assets. I was gonna say Unreal and Epic at the same time. The Epic Unreal asset assets for Paragon Heroes. So the new thing that we're gonna use this week because we didn't cover last week is the animation blueprint, um, which is another kind of piece of work. What's the best way of explaining this? So the best way to think about a lot of features that Unreal Engine does is it gives you lots of, it's called boilerplate, but it's like basic things like how players move, how characters move, how animations work. They're like pre, pre-built pre recipes like, um, what's, what's, the, what's the best analogy? It's like if you're a cook um, and you can make something like a bechamel sauce or like a white sauce, with like flour, milk and butter. You can once you have that recipe built in, you can then use it for all sorts of different recipes. Um, so if you want to make lasagna or macaroni cheese or anything like that, you can use those kind of rebuilt um, recipes to pull it all together. So we're going to go um, and we're going to jump into the animation blueprint, which is one of the other kind of set pieces. So if you want to hit Escape Mongoose and then down the bottom in the browser window, you should see the uh, the orange one, which is the Yin Anim blueprint. Got it. And if you double click on that bad boy we should get uh, a nice empty window. Okay, so when you first come in here, it can look a bit daunting and a bit weird. Um, there's two, well there's, well, there's kind of three main parts that we can play about with when we're doing the animation blueprint. Um, and one thing you'll notice as well, if you hover over the little window up the top left and zoom in, you'll see that um, Yin's default skin comes in. That's fine, it doesn't matter, it doesn't impact what you're doing. If you've selected a different skin, um, and the engine and the character, it'll go back to that. So don't worry. But that lets you kind of see um, and preview the animations. So um, the things that we're kind of going to be interested in and talking about this week. So the first thing is on the left, you have uh, just below that, that image, you have two graphs. One is called the event graph and one is called the anim graph. We're going to go into the event graph very, very briefly um, just to give you a quick look of what happens in there. So if you want to double click on that mongoose, it should then switch to the event graph. Okay. So this is the default epic animation um, event graph. And if you're interested in like learning more about this, this anim graph, um, or so this event graph is very basic. Um, and a lot of uh, all the secrets, like orientation warping, speed warping, um, distance curve matching, all, a lot of that like fancy tech that Epic used to drive the animation um, in Paragon is not here. This is like bare bones, like all you basically need to get things running in the engine. Um, so if you zoom in on some of the uh, some of the boxes, among so the ones at the top, the handle is kind of set up. You've got then a bunch of these like boxes. So the first one uh, is that one covers attacking. If you go down and you can kind of you can right click and move around. There we go. So you've got one there that tells you if you're in the air. So that's kind of used for the jumping animations. You've got something there for setting the speed and so on. So these are what I call the logic that drives the animation. So there's no animation in here. Um, 
but you've got like what's your roll pitch yaw what's the yaw then that's this is used for leans so when you kind of lean into moves as you're running that this this basically calculates what your lean is tells you if you're accelerating um set as full body is used for certain animations so some animations are the full body like um like when yin does her uh whiplash whatever it is the the cue when she would target that's a full body animation um, but some animations are what's considered upper body so it's so that you can do things like run and attack at the same time um, but you don't have to two animations and then before that that one's used for animation so this is like all the logic um and you use this to drive your animation so the actual animation itself is, is controlled on the left and the other graph called the anim graph okay so this is actually good this is this is probably one of the way one of the reasons that i recommend that if you want to dive into this you want to use the paragon stuff this is the anim graph um, and what it does is it basically builds up all the animation um using like logic and gates um, down the bottom right where you see the little man running on the anim graph yep that's your final animation pose so this is what you see in game um, and everything that follows from the chain above, even though like the the boxes that you've got there, mongers, they're they're like broken up into sections. They actually feed into into each other. So the last little um, box there with a the little man on it, uh, the one above it, you see in the box above, you've got the one at the very end. It's just a little pose that then gets carried on to the next box. So that saves and then kind of passes on. So these are all the layers that build up um, the animation. The one that we're going to dive into is at the very, very top left, and it should be called the lo ground locomotion. So, you see there we have uh, ground locomotion. Um, this is this this is what's known as a state machine where we can control the animations we go into. So, if you double click and go into ground locomotion, um, this is the uh, these are the animations um, and how they're driving. And what these are called these are called states. So when you're moving um, your character around, um, think of this like um, like logic as it flows through. So you start off in idle, and if you double click on the idle button, this shows you the animation. So this that little play idle combat is your idle animation. Like simple as that. Um, this is the one that you play. If you go over to the right hand side of the screen where it says asset browser, uh, up and to the right a bit, up and to the right, up and to the right. Uh, right there. There we go. Okay, so this now shows you all of the uh, all the animation assets that you've got. There's two types. We'll not cover the the the, other, the two types this week, um, but just know that you have normal animations, which are the green ones, and the blue animations, which are called animation montages, which are like ways that you can kind of capture chunks of animation and put them into abilities and stuff. So, for example, if you click on Play Idle Combat on the left. Just give it a, a little left click. Yep. Hit delete. Okay. Um, and then you click compile up the top left. You'll see. Oh! Ah, oh, she's just she's just done the T-pos again. Uh, she's gone back to T-pos. Um, and that's all, folks. That's that's uh, tech time. No, no. Um, <laughs> that, uh, that's basically what happened last week, Mongoose, when you had your, your T-pos, Jen. So she didn't have an animation... Um, driving her. So at the moment, Aryan's stood still doing nothing. Um, if you go and let's, uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a choice. You can pick mongoose. You can pick any of the green animations on the right there. You, uh, you, you go fill your boots. Oh, you, oh, these are cool, man. You haven't even seen half of these. <laughs> right, oh, that's cool. Uh, okay, I so have a double click on it, man. Right, that's fine. I was actually going to say, if you want to double click, you can uh, go into it and you can kind of get a, a good looking feel for it and you can see her doing her seductive hand and it's just called Wanna Play. Interesting. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can do that. And if you close the uh, the the, mod, the animation at the top, so that, that's the button. Oh, yep. Yeah. That's the one. Um, if you want to put that in, you can just pick any of the ones on the right, drag it into the left and drag it in the free space there you go that's going to drop it in there we go you can move it to the side a little bit so it's out of the way and then to rig this animation in all you have to do is then just drag the two little men together so if you drag from the animation the click on the little man there you go drag it in there there we Yay. go hit compile hit compile there we go i did a thing so you did a thing mongoose so you have replaced the idle animation 
with uh, that emote. So now if you were playing your stood still, all that Yin is going to do is she's going to stand there and just do that with whatever it was. Oh, right on. So that's how this works. So what we're going to do is we're going to go fix her side to side motion and get that done. So I'd probably say you can you can leave that idle animation in if you want, or if you want to, you can fix it. It's your choice. No, we'll just leave it in. Hey guys, I'm going to cut this off right here and I'm going to split this segment up into three because it they, it is quite long and it's more a lot of code and everything. And if you're not into that, it's not all that interesting. So I'm going to try and keep these a little under ten minutes. So. uh Let's get back to For the Minions for now, and we'll pick this back up in next week's For the Minions. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed Tech Time with Ruba, but we are going to move on to the topic of discussion for this week. This is brought to us by Karina Nebula, and I love it. The fun of mirror matches and why they should be allowed in casual play. So what we're talking about here is a lot of, you know, a big problem with Paragon is they didn't have a draft, and you could always have mirror matches. And, you know, that's not always a good thing, especially for competitive play. You need to be able to counter pick and, and, you know, take picks away from certain people. However, it can be fun, and I hope they keep it in the casual play because it is a great time um, whenever you're going up against somebody that's playing the same hero as you and you get to match skills with them and see uh, who's the better Richter in my case. And sometimes I was not the better Richter. <laughs> so I... Uh, uh, Karina, you, you you kind of brought this up, so why don't you why don't you get into it here with uh, Gideon, I suppose. Yeah, um, I really enjoyed playing against other Gideons, especially like starting out, or you know, if I wanted to play no skin, and if somebody had an undertow skin and they thought they were so cool, um, <laughs> just prove them that they haven't played enough of the game, and um, it's just lots of fun to just <laughs> yeah be this... super even evenly matched. Yeah, and also like as a as a new player, you sort of learn the, how to play your character. If you're watching someone else who's better than you, it's sort of helpful. So, ah, that's yeah. a very good point. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, yeah, that is an excellent point because yeah, there were many times where when I was first learning to play Sparrow, if I happened to which it was a little different with um, you know playing carry because you didn't go carry versus carry often unless you were in a team fight or something. Um, but, uh, I would check out, you know, the, the Sparrow's deck and see, okay, what, what's she working with? But there's also that when you did get in a team fight or you happen to, with my case, be in the wrong place <laughs> at the wrong time, if I went up against a, another Sparrow, when you did get that kill, you always get that little bit of like, oh yeah, I was the better, I was the better man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so the kind of the dangers of that sometimes though like whenever i'm playing like any game if i die or if i'm doing if i'm doing poorly i try to assess like what is it that i'm doing wrong what could i have done differently like how could i have played that out a little bit better and then but when you're going against somebody and just you, it's so competitive even if you can't mm -hmm. talk to each other like if i'm going richter versus richter and the other richter is out playing me and just doing better than me i get so upset and angry and it's very hard to think well, very hard not to think, well, if my team was supporting me like their team was supporting him, I could be kicking his ass, you know. That's a that's a trap to fall into right now because usually your team is doing the best they can. So you should just keep doing the best you can and acknowledge that maybe you aren't the absolute best at whatever hero that, <laughs> that you picked. That's another thing, too. That's another pitfall that people fall into is they'll get thrashed by somebody that's obviously better than them. And then they like, they like make it their mission to kill that person throughout the rest of the game. <laughs> yes. And that is oh, such yeah. a terrible thing to do because if no. they beat you once, they're up in card points. Now they're <laughs> up in skill and card points. They're just gonna keep not you beat the shit out of you. And you might get that one kill, but you're gonna lose the game because yeah. they're gonna be fed from killing yeah. the crap out of you. Exactly. And then you kind of like you take your eye off the prize too. You forget yeah. about the the goal of the game because you're focused on i gotta get my revenge so mm -hmm. yeah it's definitely a pitfall to be wary of that especially comes into play in mirror matches like mm -hmm. it's like do i kill this tower or i can actually i can kill that other richter i can get him you know <laughs> no just let him get away because <laughs> just, just support your team <laughs> like you're off chasing that other richter and they're getting yes. popping over top of everybody yep. because he's uninterrupted ulting on their heads and yeah there you are fucking off <laughs> mm -hmm. like you got a kill on that other richter but uh your whole team died for it so exactly yeah <laughs> that was always the case or a tower yeah a tower went down 
Uh, you guys have anything else to add to the to the topic? Nope. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. We're going to move on. We're going to do a second topic this time. We're going to be talking about... Uh, this is a topic we've discussed a few times, but uh, I think it's worth bringing up um, again, which is sustainability of the games. And, uh, like, how are they going to sustain themselves? Uh, I think pretty much every single one of these games plans to be free-to-play. That seems to be the most popular business model nowadays. So, ideas. Karina Nebula, what do you got? Um, I think that if the games are different enough, then they both can succeed and, you know, be sustainable. But I kind of see it going more like one will eclipse the other, people will adopt one over the other. But, you know, if they're, if they're too close to being, you know, if they're too close to the same game, basically, that I think that would happen. But if they're different enough, then I think both can survive. Okay, yeah, I think I misunderstood the... Uh... The topic here and that's well that kind of brings up another point too because um as i mentioned in the a video i just i just did um omeda and meta buff aren't the only ones out there that are making paragon like projects i i don't cover all of them some of them i think are worth covering they just don't want to be covered yet <laughs> but then uh so the, the the thing with that is though then you're splitting everything three ways mm -hmm. and even it doesn't matter how much how different it is the more these games come out the more the community is going to be split and the less chance for any one of them to succeed i think mm -hmm. but um everybody's certainly um welcome to try if, if you if they think they can make something way better than core and way better than predecessor then i say go for it but it's a it's a weird thing and then like um visionary they're they're different enough to where i think they can be sustainable on their own um we haven't seen anything from them in forever so that's kind of a hard call to make but i think if they if they've continued along the lines that they were going then yes they they, they could succeed outside of the other two outside of meta buff and uh omeda studios and then i think undying with ethereal has the best chance of just completely separating themselves and get gathering their own audience um they kind of they were never trying to be a spiritual successor to Paragon. They just sort of lucked into this pre-built fan base of third-person <laughs> MOBAs that just happened to be making a game at the same time that Paragon died. So, I think, um, and as far as as far as monetar monetarily sustaining themselves, um, I mean, it's it's going to have to be really either you're going to have to pay to unlock the heroes. That's one way to go with the free-to-play model. Like, you have a rotation of heroes that are free each week, but you can pay to unlock certain heroes if you happen to like one hero. And then the other thing is cosmetic items, which is probably the big one. And I think is it's something that these... It's not as important as gameplay right now, but it's something that all these companies need to look into, is making sure that they can produce skins and maybe even weapon skins and all this kind of stuff for the heroes so they can sustain sell those skins and sustain their game. What do you guys think? What are your feelings on like founders packs? Like yay nay, you like them, you don't like them? Um I I don't see anything wrong with founders packs as long as they can prove that they have a a, <clears throat> a working game before they offer the founders pack. And right. then um I think I think Ethereal is doing it the right way by offering a paid um, access to their alpha, but after that, it's going to be free to play, and um, and even that that paid access, they're not they're not going to. That isn't something you could pay for right now. Like they're not offering that right now. They're going to wait right. until they can come out with a gameplay trailer and prove that the game works before they offer that sort of kind of. I guess you could be you could consider that a founder's pack. It's the exact same thing. So. Yeah, I'm actually surprised because I am the cheapskate gamer herself. I actually like the idea of the paid alpha because it's a good way to you're you're going to get I don't know how to word this. You're going to get a good crowd basically. Like if if someone paid to get into it, you're going to most likely get really good information back from them. Um I guess not that you you don't with a free alpha, but um you're going to have people that are really passionate obviously about the project that we're willing to pay for it and it's a good way to 
make a little make a little cash you know and and help support your game so i like it i would def i'm i'm in i'm down and i'm cheap so <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i didn't i didn't really think of it like that so you know now that you say that i'm i'm more more yeah Nope, I'm having a little bit of connectivity issues. Oh no. <laughs> Alright, it seems to have smoothed out. Okay, I think that's gonna that's gonna wrap it up for the topics for discussion. Uh let's move on to plugs. Karina and Nebula, you got anything you wanna plug? You got a Twitch stream, YouTube channel, anything like that? Uh yeah, I have just started streaming a bit of uh Sea of Thieves with my brother who I mentioned earlier, so um I have the same name on Twitch, uh, Karina underscore Nebula. So if you want to watch me play Sea of Thieves. Right on. I'll link that down in the uh, description below. Cool. I'm excited to check that out. <laughs> Mandy being a big streamer now herself. Uh, yeah, a little uh, bit. Little <coughs> bit. <laughs> Twi Twitch affiliate. Twitch affiliate. <laughs> oh, oh, just yeah, just happened. I'm still a baby. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm still trying to get everything set up, but I sure do appreciate everybody who has clicked that follow button and even now my little bitties and my little subscriptions and stuff you guys make me so happy i can't even express it <laughs> and uh yeah i got nothing to plug so. <laughs> <laughs> well like uh well i'll be probably streaming one of these games at some point so yeah, yeah hopefully yeah. hopefully yeah. soon <laughs> hopefully so that's going to be it for this week i'm glad you guys could all come out and watch um just uh like I, like like I said in my last video just do your own research on the on these companies I mean if you watch for the minions pretty regularly then you've got a lot of good information on the 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 big four as I call them but if anything else crops up just you know be a little skeptical and you know do some research find out a little more about them before you kind of throw a whole hog in in on them but um I think that's going to be it for this week this is the for the minions crew signing off you guys have a good one Man goose. All right, uh, Mandy, give me a sound check. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to For the Minions. Blah blah blah. Cool, Karina. Hey guys, my name's Karina. I'm just a regular old Paragon player. All right, you were a little quiet. Why don't you try again? I just turned you up a little bit. Okay. Hey guys, Karina here. Um, I'm here to talk about Paragon. Okay, cool. And uh, let me do one. Hello, everybody. My name is Mandy Mel, and welcome to this video. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sass me. <laughs> Don't you?